What's going on internet? IG back again today and today's video is going to be jumping into some of the first impressions that I have of Linux Mint's upcoming 19.1 Tessa release. Okay, so I want to be really clear that um, that while this video, at the time of the release of this video, the beta is out and you can download it and you can test it out, submit bug reports. This is not the final release and having said all of that, this is not my final review. This will be a first impressions, highlighting some of the changes that have happened since Linux Mint 19. And, uh, and honestly, as per the custom with Linux Mint, it is iterative. Iterative is the name of the game when it comes to Linux Mint. And, uh, and the overall spit and polish that they put into their releases uh, can be seen over, gosh, I think we're, this is the 29th named release of Linux Mint, which is mind boggling. But um, honestly, they've, they've come a long way. Now, I love how Linux Mint is definitely its own thing. Um, and I think their user base appreciates that. And definitely if you go check out the why Linux Mint is so popular video that I did a couple weeks back, um, you can definitely uh, get more information as to uh, kind of what Mint has done different to a lot of distributions. Um, but that trend continues here in 19.1. So let's highlight what are the actual changes that have come out since the 19. Uh, Tara release. So first of all, um, we're going to talk about Cinnamon because that is kind of the flagship of Linux Mint. Uh, it's it's basically the only um, distro that uses Cinnamon by default and a lot of its team and time and development goes into developing Cinnamon. So we're at Cinnamon 4.0, which is a big release for the Cinnamon team. There's a lot of uh, improvements and optimization that's happened in the background. And I can testify to the fact that um, that Cinnamon as a uh, as a window manager is actually a little bit lighter than some of the others out there and um, and I know we c commonly look at RAM and stuff like that but honestly in a virtual machine here where we're running on 4 gig of RAM we're running with right on um, a gig of RAM which for a modern desktop environment is pretty good and as you can see the CPU is kind of doing barely anything uh, at all. It's kind of idling. Uh, for me, before when I was running off a cold boot, it was yeah idling at about two to three uh, percent with each core. Again, virtual machines are you know the numbers are take it or leave it, but there it is indicative of a trend that um, that Cinnamon as a desktop environment and the GTK backend that supports it is getting lighter and more trimmed up as time goes on. Now the I guess the downside to Linux Mint 19.1 is that it doesn't come with a vastly updated kernel. That'll probably come along when uh, 18.04.2 happens, where they might bring in a, a newer kernel or at least a newer hardware enablement stack. Uh, and so Linux Mint will inherit that. But as it stands right now, we are still sitting on the 4.15 uh, kernel, um, which is you know pretty standard for an Ubuntu uh, LTS release as Linux Mint 19 is based on that release. Um, but the file manager, Nemo, has undergone some pretty significant speed enhancements. Uh, so they, the development team site being able to toggle uh, thumbnail loading on individual folders, um, which, is a, which is handy, um, and a lot of code cleanup in the background. So you should be able to um, load your files and folders, manipulate them, copy paste and stuff around a little bit quicker than what you could before. They also talk about a lot of uh, visual improvements that have happened to a lot of their uh, to a lot of their built-in apps, for instance, their document reader and uh, and quite a few other tools that come built into the system have had cleanups in terms of like the visual appearance. So what toolbars are present, uh, where they are, what kind of functionality they're presenting to the user straight out of the box. And also there's been some work put into the the default theme of Mint when it comes to the uh, when it comes to contrast and especially the text contrast with a lot of the gray uh, gradients and backgrounds. So if we switch over here to the themes uh, layout, so first of all, I just want to shout out to the fact that uh, the theme switcher here is is so consistently Mint, like it's Linux Mint throughout the whole thing here. There's no way you can uh, give yourself a theme that doesn't look Linux Minty. But at the same time, they give you so many great color options and uh, and and you know button layout. And, and that kind of thing that um, I dig it like I dig the amount of uh, the, the amount of customization you can get out of the box for cinnamon is just enough where you can make it kind of feel a bit better to what you're used to so for me I'm digging this real aqua theme here but they give you lots of options here in, in terms of dark uh, dark 
controls, um, darker controls, so you get a dark window header but light controls, or you can just do the standard light uh, themes as well. Um, and again, so a, a lot of the text contrast here in terms of what appears in the header compared to what is um, in the rest of the window has been tweaked and improved, which is always nice to see. And also we do have the modern panel now enabled by default. So as you can see down the bottom, the traditional window list of the Windows XP era is gone in favor of this more modern uh, panel. And again, this is probably reflective of the change in times in terms of what KDE runs by default, um, what a lot of other desktop environments, whether it's a deep in or GNOME with the dash to panel or uh, any desktop environment like that. The idea of using a window list that looks like Windows XP is kind of old. Um, but having said that, like Mint is famous for, they want to respect the choices of their, their users. And so when you first install Linux Mint, the wonderful welcome screen that greets you will uh, encourage you to make that decision, whether you want to stick to a traditional layout or whether you want to pick a modern layout. Now, the fun thing about this also is that we have a much more space efficient panel as now we can open up a, uh, we can open up multiple versions of the same window and have them present uh, thumbnail previews um, stacking them up like they do in more modern desktop environments and you can toggle between the two between a preview of the two just by jumping between them there uh, for me personally I really dig this um, the fact that you can get a more space efficient panel is paramount to uh, to good productivity in my opinion and uh, and I think it, it's just worth doing uh, it's been a while so as you can see you when you use a traditional layout it also changes the theme back to the traditional mint X theme as opposed to the more modern flat colorful mint Y theme uh, and the fact that they give you this choice right out of the box and present you with that um, I, I honestly think it's a it's a great way to introduce change slowly um, but still give users the option um, same time, the other uh, additions to the Mint welcome screen here, uh, most of which are inherited from Tara. So, um, you know, being able to set things up like your firewall, driver manager, system snapshots, all of this stuff is really well integrated at this point. And the only other thing that I wanted to mention was the fact that uh, a lot of the little system applets and utilities can now be found by searching them in the menu. So they have uh, icons in the menu here where you can jump in and set the preferences uh, for different options, whether it's uh, network, whether it's uh, Redshift, which is obviously the blue light filter that uh, that a lot of Linux distributions use. So for me, as a first impression of this distribution, honestly, this is something that I've been uh, telling people for a while. But if you are going to get into Linux for the first time, uh, I think Linux Mint is one of the most compelling options out there because of just how coherent and how um, how well everything works together. And just little tiny examples of this. Uh, for example, when you open up the update manager for the first time, now I'm not connected to the internet at all at the moment, so it's not gonna show up at all. But when I first installed this and was connected to the internet and had uh, and was checking for some updates, I literally opened the update manager. And as soon as I had hit, um, as soon as the update manager presented what updates were available, it prompted me to say, hey, we realize that these mirrors probably aren't the fastest for you. Do you want to change to more local mirrors? Uh, so I clicked yes. It presented me with a geographic list of all of the mirrors sorted by speed, and I was able to select those straight away. Um, not only that, but also the update manager prompted me, do, um, did I want to set up system snapshots? Again, these are all little things that as uh, if you're a power user or if you've been using computers for a while, th that sort of idea comes naturally to you to set up those things to make sure you've got um, redundancies in place. So that if an update does screw up your system, you're good. But with a new user or somebody who, you know, just casually uses their computer and just expects it to work, that kind of stuff um, makes a lot of difference. And the fact that they prompt you to, you know, change the, the, the locale of the mirror that's serving you the updates and the fact that they prompt you to change uh, your default backup so that you have system snapshots available is all, um, is, all, is all exemplary of the fact that Linux Mint is built for its users. I guess my only criticism of Cinnamon as a desktop environment at this stage is that when it comes to displaying uh, notifications or having a stacked notification list that is not enabled or, or present on the Cinnamon desktop by default. It's a, it's a modern desktop feature that I've come to uh, really appreciate in Budgie, especially on Solus. 
Also, another criticism would be that I feel like the settings panel here is getting pretty populated and, uh, and a lot of these preferences settings could maybe be amalgamated into a more concise, uh, into a concise view. Um, having said that though, I love the options that it presents me and the fact that they're all very neatly spaced out and easy to search through and find. Uh, I don't, it's not a huge complaint, but again, I feel like it's something that's maybe a little too cluttered now. And if I was to really nitpick on a personal preference, uh, the uh, having support for a global menu or having a heads up display tool uh, like Ubuntu's Unity did would, would honestly make this by far the best desktop environment in my opinion. In the past, I've criticized Linux Mint's look and feel and the fact that it's been dated and it needs an update. They're slowly getting to that point and the icons I think are perfectly fine. The themes that they present you are, are very consistent, very minty, but still give you the, uh, the option to display a little bit of personality in terms of what color you're choosing. Uh, the wallpapers here are updated as well. This is all very superficial stuff, but at the same time, every little piece uh, every little piece of this distribution all ties together to make a uh, to make a product that is really worth recommending uh, to anyone who's looking to try out Linux for the first time. Okay, so that'll be all from me in this video. Honestly, you've probably heard enough about Linux Mint from me at this point, um, but this is a project that is very fun to uh, to watch and participate in. Uh, I love what the Mint team are doing, and uh, and if they keep innovating at this rate. Um, they're already far easier and far more accessible, I think, to use than uh, default Ubuntu, despite Ubuntu's fantastic documentation and market share. Um, I think Linux Mint is just a far more focused project, and so the, the desktop experience really benefits from that. Um, so yeah, I will uh, let me know if you want me to uh, do a proper, you know, embedded two week plus usage review of this distribution because uh, I haven't even touched on things like what software is enabled in the repositories and, uh, you know, how Flatpak support is and all of that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that in another video, then drop uh, a like or a comment below. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a uh, fantastic day and I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.